Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look and talking about the dark web. Or onion sites, as they're more accurately referred to as. Uh, you can also call them as they were historically known as hidden services. Uh, but essentially, onions are anonymous websites. Now, what makes them unique, and what ultimately makes the dark web different from the surface web, is not just the users are anonymous, but the server is also anonymous. Because... You're actually, instead of using, the way Tor normally works is similar to a VPN, you have a couple of nodes in the middle, and then you have an exit node that functions similar to how a VPN or a proxy does. Well, with Onions, you cut the exit node out of the equation, because the Onion server is actually also anonymized by this network. So, as a result, you do not know the IP address of the website you are accessing, and the website does not know your IP address. There are no IP addresses of any meaning in this system. So it's completely anonymous, and it can be used for a lot of things. Tor was actually invented by the US Navy, uh, and they made it public because the service would be entirely useless for anonymizing them if everyone knew they had it. But they could use it in hostile countries for communications without worry. So onions allow everything to be secret. It's great. And what we're going to go over are some different ways of accessing onions, some of which are very secure, some of which are very not small. So what is the dumbest way to use the dark web? I'll let you take a guess and then I'll tell you. Uh, the dumbest way to use a dark web is to find, and I don't know how many of these are still up, uh, an onion proxy. Now what is an onion proxy? Uh, it's a site like this. Now. Depending on the type of onion you are using, and they even warn you, they're not hiding it. I don't want to call these people out for being bad, but this is not a good idea. I think Onion Tome might actually be dead at this point, but uh, this was uh, one of the most dangerous ones. And the funny thing is, given these were proxied to the clear net, uh, the sites on onion.to could actually get indexed on places like Google. So we know that's not a great idea. So what are some other... Uh, let, let's go over to things that are uh, mid. So... The next thing you could do, uh, some VPN providers have a Tor exit built in. I would not recommend using that because it creates the risk for a correlation attack and it's probably not that popular. So it might be possible to subpoena a VPN provider to get more information. I, I just wouldn't recommend uh, using something like that. Now, I will say it's not a bad idea to use a VPN when using Tor, it's not, it neither really helps or hurts, because the VPN provider can't see what you're doing on Tor either, but it certainly isn't necessary. Uh, another thing I would not really recommend doing is some browsers, uh, most famously Brave has this. Uh, let's go over to, uh, you can do new private window with Tor. And uh, this is technically perfectly fine, the, the only real issue with using Tor mode on Brave as opposed to Tor browser is the browser settings are not quite as secure. Uh, one of the most concerning things would be given that Brave is Chromium based, uh, as far as I know the V8 JavaScript JIT, which has had the occasional escape vulnerability, is enabled, and it's very possible to fingerprint you as a Brave user. Still with all of that said, this is substantially safer than using onion.to or something like it, or using a completely uh, unprotected, like a Chromium or something, with default settings and manually setting up Tor. Now also what you can see as we're testing this is Tor is slow. Now that's the trade-off you get because this is being routed through so many different computers. Now here you can see we have set essentially an ordinary Brave or Google Chrome user agent, which combined with the fact that we're using the Tor network is statistically uncommon, because almost everyone on the Tor network is going to use what I'm going to talk about next. And this would be the main recommendation. For 99% of uses, this is perfectly fine. Downloading the Tor browser for whatever operating system you're on, if you're on Linux, you also should probably check and see if your package manager has it. Uh, you can use some Windows, Mac, Android, I, you can probably also get it for free BSD. This is completely open source. This is essentially a Firefox that is substantially more hardened and private. It's got some modifications so that it will not run untrusted JavaScript. It comes with absolutely zero plugins, which is very important. And it's got one other trick up its sleeve. See, there's one other method of 
uh, fingerprinting browser users. And I'm actually showing it to you right now as I'm resizing this browser window. Because monitors come in different sizes, and the size of your screen is actually a potential giveaway. Uh, so Tor Browser circumvents that by always using the same size for every single Tor Browser user. So there's very little information that can be obtained from Tor Browser. So this is great, but we actually can go deeper, and that's what we're going to get into. Do you want to have total privacy? Well, there are still some ways that traces of Tor Browser could be left on the computer. What if having an installed operating system that could contain traces and go fully underground? Well, that's where Tails comes in. Not the thing that people keep telling you to put on at 200,000 subscribers. The answer is no, by the way. Uh, this is actually a famous privacy-focused Linux distribution. As many people on Darknet forums will say, it's Tails or Jails for cybercriminals. Tails is incredibly powerful, and we're actually going to set this up in a VM in just a second. Now, I'm going to use a VM so I can show this to you easily. If you want to use Tails at home for any non-trivial reason, do not use it in a VM. You have to install it. Uh, you put it on a flash drive and use it that way. That's safe. Now here we go. Who uses Tails? A lot of people. Because Tails keeps you entirely anonymous. It is recommended by Edward Snowden and the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Journalists use it when dealing with people in oppressive regimes. Domestic violence survivors are an underreported but very important user of online privacy services because in an abusive relationship, someone might not have any autonomy. They, they can't really, they oftentimes can't go out, uh, they don't have autonomy over their computer because there's probably spyware installed. Tails circumvents all of that. So to get Tails and avoid jails, uh, what we do is we go to install Tails, download Tails, and of course I, because I'm using a VM, I'm going to use an ISO, but you should probably use the USB image. It doesn't hugely matter. And here they have some additional recommendations. Only use Tails for one thing at a time. Do not share files. And of course, uh, there is also the risk of firmware level spyware, but it's very unlikely you're going to run into that. Now here, with limitations of the Tor network, these are worth reading. Uh, this one is critical, and, and you could use a VPN to circumvent this problem, but your internet service provider cannot see what you're browsing, but they can see that you're connected to Tor, and in some countries, you may want to use something called a Tor bridge that masks that. So we end up at a fairly typical looking GNOME uh, graphical interface. Uh, now we want to avoid creating persistent storage, although you can you can do that on a flash drive, but we can't do that on a DVD image. So we'll go start Tails, give it a second to load, and we now have Tails. Now here is where you can choose uh, whether you want to hide uh, that you're using Tor. So uh, let's go with connect to Tor automatically but here you could go if uh, that might be an issue. So we now have Tor. Let's see what else we get. So we get Tor connection, Tails documentation, uh, Tails cloner, Thunderbird, uh, KeyPass, XC, which we could use in conjunction uh, with persistent storage in order to keep uh, passwords on our private system. Got our Tails report here. You can chat anonymously. And of course, the default search engine is DuckDuckGo, which is more privacy focused than Google. Now, let's see. Uh, one of the most popular uh, Onion sites, uh, which is basically just a form on the dark web, is called Dread. So let's go here to finish this off. Oh. I'm pretty sure this site is a scam. I think I just clicked it. Oh, well, that seems to be dead. Uh, Should have known better, but... Yeah, first result on DuckDuckGo was a phishing site. It doesn't really matter, uh, given I don't have an account, but if I did, it could be an issue. Now this is, because one of the drawbacks of a system with absolutely zero identification is DDoS attacks become a much bigger threat. So it's got to do some sort of verification here. And here we've got the top discussion on the front page of Dread. Got Monero, OneX, Oh, they, yeah, they actually got rid of the really annoying... Last time I tried this, it was really annoying. Uh, people are asking about how to get their Monero 
asking for help there online. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, and a lot of people are asking. And here we go. Shout out to Tails. You don't need an 8 gigabyte flash drive, but one and a half. Uh, Tor built in VPN. Uh, yeah, people are confusing that. Yeah, technically speaking, Tor and all the things related are not VPNs. They're proxies. Uh, similar effect, but different product. VPN works differently. Best way to cash out crypto. And of course, you can assume a lot of these are probably not doing the most legal things. Uh, and here we go. This is actually kind of important. So Telegram will share your IP address and phone number. And keep in mind, most messages on Telegram are not encrypted. So if you're doing anything untoward, or if you care about your privacy, uh, I, I would suggest not using Telegram. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please let me know in the comments below if you learned something or have anything else you'd want to share about this. I might make another video where we actually go and browse some dark web sites and see what's actually up, but this is a good introduction to the dark web and what's on there. That's all for me for now. Bye!